Hello everybody and welcome to a very special virtual church. We are at Lansing College and I will bring you virtual church today from the spectacular chapel. This is one of the largest school chapels in the entire world. It is the largest school chapel here in the United Kingdom. It's one of the highest and it also has the largest rose window here in the UK. There is also, luckily for us, a four manual Walker organ and today we will have 13 hymns and a number of organ pieces and of course an organ demonstration. I think we should head up to the chapel to explore this really wonderful building. So here we are, arriving in the West Gallery in this glorious chapel. The first thing that you see when we're walking up here is this view. Look at this. Incredible. The largest school chapel here in the United Kingdom. And in the chapel we have this glorious four-manual Walker organ which we'll, we will be exploring today in some detail. On the music desk right now is All My Hope on God is founded to the tune Michael. And for the final verse, we will hear Howells' own reharmonization. Let's see what this organ sounds like in this glorious chapel.
such a wonderfully rich and powerful sound. For some reason, and it's, it might sound fairly obvious to you, but this organ just really sounds like a school chapel organ. It just has lots of weight to it, and you can really add a lot of um, mixture, foundation, and reed stops. And you get the impression that the boys and the girls in this school, it's co-ed, um, will be not to be outsung by this wonderful instrument. So, of course, that was um, All My Hope On God Is Founded, a request there from, uh, from Jean. Thank you very much, Jean. And we did have Howells' own descant and reharmonization in the final verse there. That wasn't Noel Rawsthorne. We're now going to go into common praise, and we're going to have another wonderful hymn. Um, I vow to thee my country. This is um, by Holst. The tune is by Holst. Um, it's from his Planet Suite, which I'm sure you all know. Um, but it has been adapted here for, uh, for him use, and it works rather well. The words are by Cecil Spring Rice. The tune is Thackstead. Let's, um, let, let's start with a, a solo stop, shall we? Let's start on the choir um, with the swell couple to it. But let's listen to the great trumpet as a solo stop to see what that sounds like. Need to remember to keep pulling out the great and pedal combinations piston that cancels with general cancel annoyingly. So here we go. This is a I vow to thee my country. Thank you very much, Ralph, for requesting that one. I'll be very interested to hear those um, shamard reeds right above my head. Um, I'd be interested to hear them on the recording to see how loud they are. They're very loud right here, but I suspect that um, the, the rest of the organ will actually balance with them pretty well. I could be eating my words right now. Let's see in the edit. So this organ, um, you will, we, we will ex uh, explore all of the stops today. We'll um, go through all of the, um, the solo stops, the mutations, and the solo stops, everything else, uh, in more detail. But it dates from the 1980s. This organ um, basically encompassed and replaced a smaller Walker organ, which was uh, built earlier in the 20th century. 
um, and we have this four manual organ here today. Two, only two stops on the solo division, the, the on shimmered reeds there. It's all tracker action, so it's very immediate, feels very nice to play indeed, and it, all the keys have a very nice, the manual should I say, have a very nice weight to them, um, meaning that even though I'm pulling out full swell, full grates, and coupling them all together, they don't feel too heavy. I think that's really important. That's, when, when you play these organs and playing various staccatos on them, which inevitably are loud, um, and the action gets really, really heavy, it becomes very hard work. But this actually is quite easy. It's nice to play. So we're going to have organ pieces as well today, of course. Um, so we'll have a number of organ pieces. And we, we have 12 hymns. Actually, we have 13 hymns because the verger has made a very specific request for a hymn later on. So we'll have that. Let's, meanwhile, go back to NEH and have uh, number 401, Blessed City, Heavenly Salem. This is a request from James, who is, um, um, who is in Sussex. Now, we are in West Sussex. Now, James, I don't know whereabouts you are in Sussex. I don't know whether you're in West Sussex or what, but um, this is uh, for you. We probably will, we, we won't have all of the verses if that's okay. In fact, actually, the words are different in the, in the hymn book here, um, but I will give you four verses of this tune, uh, Regent Square by Henry Smart. So, James has asked for Blessed City, Heavenly Salem, but actually the words in this particular um, hymn book are Lights Abode, Celestial Salem, which is probably the same, isn't it, really?
has that really, I just can't quite find the right word for it. The, the diapason is on the grate. Um, there are three diapason eight foots on the grate. Shall we explore some of these stops, actually? Shall we start with the grate whilst we're talking about it? So there's a flute, a walled flute here. along with the four-foot harmonic flute. Going on to the diapasons now. So there's, as I say, there were three. Let's start with the small one. Medium. Large. All three together. And there's a 16 foot as well to go with that. Let's have that along with all three diapasons and the four foot principle. There's a two foot as well, so let's take off some of those diapasons now. So we'll have a medium eight foot principal and fifteenth. It's a twelfth, which goes nicely with the eight and four foot flutes. We have mixtures, so we have a furniture and a sharp mixture. So the, um, the sharp mixture is brighter and higher than the furniture. So let's start with the furniture. Sharp mixture. With the um, more, a bit more, bit more foundation. Going up to the reeds now. Actually, before we get to the reeds, we have a cornet as well. Uh, eight foot trumpet. Sixteen. Four. And full great, as you've heard already a few times in the hymn, sounds like this.
I like this sort of organ. It's just it has uh, it has character and it has weight, and it's really good for playing hymns like um, that the ones we've been having today, and works really well for accompanying and leading a, a chapel full of boys and girls. So, uh, come down, a love divine is next. One hundred and thirty-seven in the NEH, and it is a request uh, which has come in from Valerie. So here, this is um, an opportunity just to explore some of the quieter stops. We haven't yet heard the clarinet on the choir. I think we, we, we ought to hear it now. Uh, let's accompany that with the eight foot tone stops on the swell only, I think, for now. So come down, I will love divine, the wonderful tune, Down Ampany by Rafe Vaughan Williams. Really, very fortunate indeed to have two organs in this chapel. Actually, there are three. I think there's one downstairs, but there's one at the east end, which we'll, we'll uh, be hearing later on. I'll need to move the microphones around to hear it, um, to record it, should I say? I think we should now have um, our uh, first organ piece. Now, let's have a piece of English music first, shall we? You heard me play this last week in the um, anniversary um, uh, organ album for 9-11, In Memoriam. 
And actually, I got the inspiration for that title from this particular piece. It is the um, Elgar, Solemn Prelude in Memoriam. Uh, it's from For the Fallen, and it's by Edward Elgar. And this will give us an opportunity just, an opportunity just to hear this uh, played on a real English organ. It, it, he asks for a tuba later on, so we can engage the bombard by doing that. Um, otherwise, we'll just have to wing it and see how we um, see how we get on. So this is the uh, in, Memor in memoriam by um, L Edward Elgar, which comes from For the Fallen.
a really powerful and uh, poignant piece that perhaps I should have played something a little bit more uplifting. Uh, but actually, I think that is a really special, wonderful uh, piece. I only learnt it for uh, the organ album last week, the 9-11 uh, organ album. So it's still fresh in the memory, I think despite adding a beat at one point. So apologies for that. If I did, I'm not sure. I just, um, on, the, on the page turn, panicked, I thought. Crikey, I've suddenly added a 5-4 bar. <laughs> Can't have that. Anyway, let's zoom on. Let's go on to, um, and can it be? This is a request from David Fletcher, uh, number 376 in uh, common praise. Here we go. So we're not going to have five verses, we'll have four verses, and we'll actually just hold on to the tempo somewhat. So we're not gonna go off at a, a huge lick like I sometimes do in this hymn. Just going to hold on to that tempo. Now, what shall we use um, for this one? It's quite a strong hymn. It's a, it's a hymn which is sung well. It's sung strongly, so we'll need a fairly rich and strong sound, which I think I've just got. So here we go. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood?
I've never played an organ before with just two divisionals on the top manual. Divisional one is for the eight foot, and divisional two brings on the four foot. That's jolly useful, actually. Um, thank you for requesting that. Now, we're going to have a request from Keith, um, 04 a thousand tongs. Now, Keith is going to introduce this video himself. So, I'll hand over to Keith now. Take it away, Keith. Hello, I'm Keith. I'm sitting in my garden with a cup of hot coffee as opposed to the lukewarm coffee that poor Richard ends up drinking because he's too busy playing for us. My request for a hymn is for the Charles Wesley hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing My Great Redeemer's Praise, and the music is Lingham. When I was a teenager, my twin brother Roger and I and a friend of the same age would stand in church together and sing this song <coughs> excuse me and uh, the chorus has a, a wonderful leading bass line and the three of us would stand together and belt this out with all the welly we could give it it was very exciting Lorna, my wife and I, have sung in a choir for six or seven years with Richard and Caroline, a local choir, which was a wonderful time. There were about 25 of us. I'm looking forward to the time when I shall be joining the Heavenly Choir, where there will be at least a thousand tongues to sing our Redeemer's praise. I hope you will enjoy the music. I hope you will find it uplifting.
have heard one more hymn, then we'll have a, a, an epic piece by the great man J.S. Bach. So you heard some Bach last night on the um, organ recital, but let's hear another uh, monumental piece by the great man himself. So before we get that uh, to that piece, let's just tone the volume down. Oh God, you search me out. Sorry. Oh God, you search me and you know me. And there are 747. Luckily, that's just a few hymns after where we currently are. This is a really, really, really spectacular chapel indeed. It is the largest school chapel here in the United Kingdom. It is one of the largest um, churches or largest sort of architectural, um, I think, uh, churches, chapels, churches in the whole country. But it certainly has the largest, <laughs> another largest um, rose window on the west wall, just above the organ there. Um, I mean, this, it's just, it's, 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 it's like, it's like um, there's something you would find in France, this place. You look down into the chapel now, uh, it is truly gorgeous. It's high, I mean, we're quite high here, sitting on the west gallery. You can look down onto the congregation, but then you look up and it keeps going and going all the way to the top. Um, it's amazing. It's a really, really amazing chapel indeed. In Lansing College are very, very lucky to have such an awesome chapel and uh, amazing organs and uh, uh, incredible music department. It's certainly, certainly a school um, I think Caroline and I would consider for, for our Hugo if he would like to go to a school like this. Um, it certainly feels very, very inspirational. So Gerda has asked for, um, oh God, you search me and you know me. Uh, music is by Bernadette Farrell. Let's, uh, let's have the clarinet, shall we, once again, accompanied by the eight and four flutes on the swell. And actually, after this hymn, before the bark, we will explore some of the um, swell stops. We are about halfway through the hymns, I think, so a good opportunity now to explore these um, swell stops, as well as exploring a very exciting piece by the great man J.S. Bach, the prelude 
in E flat. So we have that, the St. Anne. So what have we got here on the swell? Well, of course, we've got some beautiful uh, strings. Let's make sure the box is open. So the voix celeste and the echo gamba sound a little bit like this. Going up to an eight foot stopped diapason. Four foot flute. And we have a 16 foot Lieblich Borden as well. Diapasons, open diapason, eight foot. With a four foot principle. Fifteenth. And then the full chorus there with the sixteen foot as well. To the reeds, let's start with the quiet one. We have a Vox Humana. With the tremulant, of course. Uh, going up to the oboe. Let's try that with the um, eight and the the two, the three eight foot stops uh, on this swell. So without the voix celeste. appropriate for French music. Okay, going up to a horn. Uh, clarion forefoot. Let's try that, try that with the horn, actually. And with the 16. Also have an octave as well. <laughs> so let's now put that. Well, you probably you probably won't hear the full swell in this piece, but you will hear those glorious mixtures, of course, in the um, on the swell and on the grate. So let's fire up the bark. Let's find um, an appropriate registration. Nothing's been set up, so we'll have to do it as we go along. I'm sure you won't mind. Oh, I've still got the howls um, on the music desk keeping an eye on me there. <laughs> Just noticed. So what are we going to have here? Let's find a, a planum. So the eight foot stops on the uh, swell. So Echo Gamba, Open Diapason, Principal, 15th mixture. On the great, let's have, well, it's, quite, it's a big majestic piece, this. Very majestic. Let's have all of the open diapasons. The four foot principle, 15th two foot, 
uh, both mixtures as well as a 12. Coupled down uh, with the swell. Choir, let's have um, eight, four, and two, along with a solitional. That's quite a, a loud stop, actually, the solitional here. No swell to choir, because I want to have a little bit of a um, difference between uh, the choir and the swell. On the pedal, we'll have, we will have swell to pedal, but we will not have a great to pedal. Sub bass, borden, octave, flute, mixture. I suspect the bombard will be quite heavy, um, but we'll have it in a way, why not? <laughs> um, and the principal, 16 foot. So let's see what that sounds like. That might not um, balance, but let's give it a whirl.
it's such a wonderful piece, isn't it? You have in this um, prelude alone three styles of uh, music. You have a French overture at the, um, the beginning here, which then goes into uh, sort of an Italian uh, style of writing with this idea. Um, and then back to the uh, French overture with the opening, and then you have a German style fugue with the. So three styles in this uh, prelude, um, which is, I think, really significant because this piece comes from the, the Clavier Ubung, which is all about the Holy Trinity. Um, and um, numbers of three are in abundance in that uh, volume of organ music, including this prelude and fugue. Three, th uh, three flats, for example. Um, Town signature is uh, well. Actually, the sound signature is, uh, is 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 four four, but it doesn't really count. But the fugue, if you go over over to the fugue, uh, is in three sections. Um, you 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 can do the, the, your homework and let me know. Um, well, there's essays and all sorts of things written about that. It's not something for today. Okay, let's go on to a few more hymns, shall we? Where are we up to here? We're actually on to a request from David Beckman, who's been very good um, and sent in his own uh, recorded introduction. So I will hand over to David to uh, announce his hymn. Hello, everyone. Uh, Richard, uh, would you please play the hymn, God is Working His Purpose Out, to the tune Benson? I think it is helpful for us all to remember God's sovereign mercies and good purposes in these difficult times in which we're living. The Lord be with you. Thank you so much. And uh, God bless you all.
like playing that hymn. I like the music, I like the words, and I like the music, the, the tune. What I don't like about it is the fact that each verse has a different number of syllables. And as an organist, particularly when playing it as a solo, I have to work out how many syllables there are in each line uh, and repeat certain notes. It's not very easy to do that, actually. The next hymn doesn't require any of that at all. It is just simply two verses, wonderful words by George Herbert. The tune is called Lookington and it's by Basil Harwood. Let all the world in every corner sing. I think that's the sort of volume that the organist uh, playing for a real service in this chapel would be using, um, actually. From what I gather talking to the verger of Andrew, um, the organist has to play full organ to get the sound down. Um, and I can just imagine that being a sort of a registration that they would use. OK, let's go on to uh, ooh, a much quieter hymn into the red one here and this is a request from Anne Dantino it is a blessed assurance I've had this one a few times on the VC um, back at home in my own organ but I've never played it out on a real organ before so I think this is actually a world first for me playing this hymn on a uh, with real pipes it's not it's not a hymn that I have um, that I know really so which, what haven't we used yet, and, 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 uh, Andantino? I'll tell you what we haven't used in solo. We haven't used the Vox Humana, have we? So I think we ought to use that. It's a bit of a naughty stop for obvious reasons, but let's use it anyway. So let's accompany it with, on the choir with the box shut. It's a couple of choir to pedal. Let's get uh, choir and swell to great ready. Make sure swell to pedal isn't on. There we go. So this is blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine.
It's nice to hear the clarinet, and um, we'll be very interested to hear how um, how well the vox humana comes through when I get home and listen to it in the mix. It sounded really quiet here, so I had to make sure the choir box was, was um, closed tight. What we're going to do now is actually head on downstairs to listen to the, um, the wonderful organ uh, down there, and we'll have one hymn and a piece, a beautiful chorale by Bach on that organ. So welcome to the second organ in the um, wonderful chapel here at Lansing. This organ dates from 1986 and it is a uh, Frobenius organ and it's actually installed at the same time as the main organ on the West Gallery. This organ is used uh, largely for a company in the choir who actually sit right behind me in these choir stalls here. And these um, divisionals here, these thumb pistons, uh, actually control the main organ. So the organist can use uh, parts of the main organ, at least, uh, to, to accompany and lead the congregation sat all the way down there. This hymn is called um, Because He Lives, and the words are Jesus, sorry, <laughs> the words are God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave there is to prove my saviour lives. So I'm going to use um, a quint on the top manual accompanied by the uh, eight foot flute on the bottom manual.
course with the um, obligatory key change there, which I, I think some of you might have enjoyed. So that was um, God sent his son, they called him Jesus, on this wonderful organ. I'm not entirely sure that um, this sort of organ was designed to play hymns like that. This is designed actually for um, really clear stuff, technical stuff, um, which requires great precision. A little bit like this Bach. I've set myself up there, haven't I? <laughs> Let's listen to uh, this um, wonderful organ chorale by Bach. Um, o Lam got us unschuldig uh, from the Orgel Buchlein. It's based on the Arnus Day and actually is appropriate for Good Friday in Passion Tide. It isn't Good Friday and it isn't certainly isn't Passion Tide, um, but this is a good Monday because we've had a, a wonderful day in this gorgeous chapel. So what has this organ got? Well, it's got a few a few things really. It's got um, wonderful flutes, eight and four on the um, positive division. Flutes down here on the grate. And a principal, eight, four, and a, a two foot on the uh, positive. Diapasons. Two foot. And we have two mixtures, so a shaft on the positive, a mixture on the grate, a sesquialtra on the uh, on the grate here. with a tremulant. Uh, and a trumpet on the grate. A crumhorn or a clarinet on the positive. Uh, and the quint, which actually you heard in verse one of the hymn. Down on the pedal, there's a usual uh, 16, 8, and 4, and then a for, uh, forgot. So let's just listen to this um, really quiet chorale. Um, I'll use the crumb horn, I'll couple that down to the uh, pedal, and I'll accompany that with, uh, let's try. Mm. The flute eight foot uh, with the tremulant on the grate. The O Lamb Gotters on Schuldig by J.S. Bach from the Ugelpuch line.
the keen musical um, uh, musicians amongst you will have, of course, heard that um, the tune is in canon there. Starts in the uh, in the pedal, starting on the F and the tonic. But then two beats later, you hear it in the in the alto part. It's a canon based at the fifth. Anyway, enough music theory today. Let's head back up to the um, four manual organ to explore some more of these stops. Well, I did say that earlier on I would play a hymn at, at the request of the verger here, Andrew. Um, he asked me just today to play, Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end to the tune Wolvercoat. Um, the music is by William Ferguson and didn't know this until today, but William Ferguson was um, a housemaster here. He was um, the first housemaster of the uh, Fields House here at Lansing College. So there's a nice connection between uh, this particular hymn and this college. This chapel um, is one of the uh, Nathaniel um, Woodard um, uh, chapels. He uh, uh, was a, a great supporter of education and founded I think around 11 schools, including Lansing College, uh, Hurst Pier, Point and Ardingly, which are all in West Sussex. Uh, what a great legacy to have, to, um, to leave these chapels and schools behind in your legacy would just be incredible. I would really, really encourage you to um, come and visit Lansing um, College Chapel. It's open to visitors. Um, it isn't at the minute. It will be open, I think, again in, towards the end of October. Hopefully, um, you will, if by the time you've made plans it, to come and visit, it will be open. <laughs> um, but it's, it's definitely well worth it. While you're in the area, you can also go and visit Arundel. It's just up the road, 15 minutes or so away. So, let's get some stops out for this hymn. Um, um, Wolvercoat, oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end.
which actually then takes us on to our final hymn before we go into our uh, organ voluntary tonight, which is going to be a piece by Alexandre Guillemot. You'll all know it. I think you've heard me play it before. It's March on a theme by Handel. I thought that would be rather good to show off the, the, um, the crescendo of, of this organ. Um, right, where are we going to now? A, oh, I'm in the wrong hymn book, that's why. <laughs> Final hymn is Co Fen. There aren't many hymns with its, with its own Facebook group, but Co Fen, how should I sing that Majesty has its own Facebook group? It's that popular. Uh, written by Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Naylor, it is a fairly modern tune with words by John Mason. We will have three verses. We will omit verse three. Oh, actually, it has wonderful, uh, wonderful words in it. Let's keep it in. Let's do four verses. I'm going I'm to spoil you. Let's do four verses of this wonderful hymn. So, how shall I sing that majesty which angels do admire? Tune is Kofen, and it's been requested by uh, Tony. Apologies if I haven't announced your name. I think I've mentioned everyone's names, haven't I? Yes, I, th I, think, I think I have. So, how shall I sing that majesty? I think we'll have to make use of the bombard for this hymn, don't you?
it's exciting. All right, that takes us into the final piece tonight. Um, the wonderful piece by Alexandra Gilmore, a march on a theme by Handel. Let me find it in um, my iPad in my collection. Um, it's not there. Where would it be then? It must be there. There it is. I've had a great time here uh, playing this organ and also the one downstairs. I really hope that you've enjoyed this weekend's music. Um, a mini organ recital last night and of course virtual church this evening. Very grateful to Lansing College for allowing me this opportunity and actually for inviting me to come and play here. Uh, if you would like to invite me to come and play your uh, spectacular organ and please do get in touch I'd be very happy to come and give it a whirl <laughs> um, anyway should we play this hymn a hymn we've had loads of hymns let's play this organ piece um, and I will touch base with you straight after this let's set it up first though actually we need to explore some of these stops on the uh, we haven't heard the choir yet have we let's go for the choir so where are we? Uh, let's start with the string. So we actually have a, a Vox Angelica. That's interesting. There's quite a, a, me a mechanical noise sounding from the inside the organ. Um, with the Dulciana. gone. I don't know whether you hear that on the microphone. Um, uh, Gamba, Dulciana and Box and Angelica. Quite loud. Sixteen foot Gamba. And a Solitionel. Um, we have an eight and four foot flute, so the eight foot. Four foot. And then with the harmonic piccolo. Lovely clarinet down here. And onto the pedal. So, where do we start with these? Uh, let's start with the eight foot. So, the flute, eight foot flute. An octave, eight foot. An octave wood. Sub bass and board are quite standard. Principal 16 foot, open diapason metal, open diapason wood, and then if you've got your subwoofers turned on, the double diapason 32. Quite a lot of noise there. Uh, four foot uh, choral bass. Mixture. And then eight, an eight foot trumpet. 16 bombard. Thirty two bombard. Are 
you've heard the um, Bombard Division already, haven't you? So the eight foot. Four foot. Both together. Okay, now let's have the uh, Mangilmorm. So, he uh, wants at the beginning the eight and four diapasons, so we can do that along with the, the uh, a reed, so a oboe and the horn. Um, down on the grate, he just wants eight and four. Well, we can do that. Let's have all of the diapasons with the uh, paddle sort of booming away. The 32 uh, double open diapason. Uh, do we want any choir? I don't think we need any choir, do we really? But I will actually couple it down to the choir to play it on the choir because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, let's have some eight foot. Swell to great. There we go. So here we go. See you at the end of this.
Wow. Well, that um, draws a close to um, virtual church and a close to um, a weekend of organ music from Lansing College Chapel here in West Sussex. I am very, very grateful indeed um, to the staff at the college for being so um, welcoming and, um, and helpful throughout the, throughout the whole process here. So Andrew, uh, in particular, thank you very much indeed for your help um, and, and, uh, and enthusiasm. <laughs> Clump. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this um, and I really hope that you um, have a, now a better picture, a better um, imagination of what Lansing College is. This is the first time that I've been down here, so you know, seeing it for the first time, really, I've seen the pictures of it. You can the, ch the chapel looks amazing from the main road. It looks amazing, um, but I've never been here before. Never been inside, and it's it's well worth the uh, the trip if you can make it and if you're in the area. I will draw to close there. So thank you for joining me. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, so until next time, I will, of course, say a very fond cheerio. Goodbye, everyone. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye. What cramp? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> All that pain that's worth doing this <laughs> <No>. shot. <laughs> <laughs> it better be worth it. <laughs> it's going to be very jerky. That's why I was trying not to talk to you in case I made you laugh. <laughs> yeah, it was super jerky. Oh, will that do? <laughs> no, because... You... Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. You, you were expecting...